Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Today I'm rubbing I'm rubbing my hands for some reason. Today is Saturday the thirtieth of November two thousand and twenty four. It's a bit overcast today. Really bright yesterday, very sunny. Not warm. Not warm, but sunny. Today, it's not particularly cold, but it's very overcast. Very, It's not dull, but it's not bright. You know what I mean? It's not, you're not going to get a suntan out there. And I think it might be about to rain. Um, I've, already, I've already taken Vinny out once earlier and I did think it was going to rain but it didn't anyway uh, my name's Jason Newland please only listen to this here recording when you can safely close your eyes I just posted on Facebook asking for everyone's date of birth <sighs> yeah I thought it'd be quite cool. Just uh, I'm only for the people in my group. So Jason Newland's boring group, my Facebook group. It's a private group, so you have to be you have to be a very special individual to be allowed in the group. <gasps> so yeah. You know, I'm on Facebook now, and every now and then, I see videos, and it's usually DIY stuff, you know, but but weird DIY things. So this there's a bloke put in a secret wow. So there's a bloke, a bloke putting a secret thing into the, like a secret drawer into his wall. It's very clever. Wow. I think my DIY skills are below par, let's say. This is the kind of stuff that my dad would be able to do. I wouldn't know how to do stuff like this. He used to make cat. <laughs> You're 54. Stop bragging about your dad. Okay. No, he, he used to. I don't know what you want to call it, but there was. Um... This is like in the 80s. He was involved with a caravan builders and. Is used to create create um, electrical things inside the caravans. That's not a very descriptive description, but all I can tell you is they were pretty. Well, I was impressed. That's the whole story. I, there wasn't really much else left to that story. Wasn't the longest story ever. Yesterday I did Q and A Friday, and I now have. This is now number the one I'm doing now is now number one thousand two hundred and forty-five of the Let Me Bore You to Sleep barnacles or whatever I don't know what that's probably not the right word barnacle so uh, uh, it's 26 minutes past 1 p.m. and I'm still going through I mean I was going to do like a summary of last week the last week although I feel like I might have kind of done that already yesterday so I might be repeating myself. 
However, I've just been going online because I'm hoping, not this year, but next year, to start getting back to doing a martial arts. And I've been looking at this for quite a few months now. And I need I need to choose one that because martial arts in my it's kind of in my soul almost. You know, I've done a few different ones over the years. I never really progressed to a level that I would have or maybe I lost interest, I don't know. But I never get into black belt was what I you know, I had that dream from a child before I even started doing any any martial arts you know from probably the, the age of probably seven or eight I wanted to be a black belt and the last time I did martial arts was just before I moved in here so it's ten years ago and I had to stop because of my lower back and I was doing taekwondo and it is predominantly kicking and I couldn't do the kicks anymore without being in a huge, just, just a lot of pain and that was weird because that's the first time ever that I've left a class early that I've had to walk out I didn't like walk out in a huff and slam the door or anything but you know, told everyone I've got to go. Not everyone. I mean, we'll walk up to everyone individually. My back's hurting. Uh, bye. Hello. My, my back's hurting. I'm going to leave now. H- hello. Hello. My, my, can you stop sparring? My back's hurting. Where's Paul? Oh, he's in the toilet. Okay, I'll go and see him in the toilet. H- hello. Paul. Paul. Have you finished your poo yet? Uh, I just want to tell you that I'm leaving because my back. Y- leave you alone okay all right then see you bye now i didn't go to up to each individual person but i spoke to the sensei or the the sir as i used to call him we used to call him sir and uh, he didn't he didn't like being called sir outside which was weird because i never he had a name i mean he was he did have have a human name but because I only really ever saw him in the class I called him sir because that was the etiquette in the same way as you bow when you enter the dojo even if the dojo's a school hall which most dojos are they usually school um, not playgrounds sports halls and I would say I imagine around the world that's the majority of places where you learn martial arts would probably be at schools, in schools, not at school, but you know, rented, rented um, school halls. I know what I'm trying to say. At least someone does, eh? And it's normal. That's why I found it quite easy when I started going to the Buddhist centre because it's the same protocol. You bow when you enter the shrine room. You bow when you leave the shrine room. You bow when you enter the dojo or the 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 place where the martial arts is taking place, the training area, whatever you want to call it, and you bow when you leave. So that kind of thing, and you bow when you address the um, the teacher or the the sensei, and you bow when you address maybe an order member at the Buddhist center. It's just a respect thing. And, I mean, let's face it, it's an Eastern thing, isn't it? It's what the, the it's where martial arts has come from, the East. Whether India, uh, Asia, China, those kind of places. It sounded almost like I knew what I was talking about then, and then I completely forgot what I was talking about. I, I know what I'm talking about, but what was the point? Of what? <laughs> Where was I going? Well, I started this conversation, and it was for a reason. Um, 
Yeah, I, I've been thinking for ages because there used to be a karate club directly opposite where I live, in a school. I was there on one night a week. I went once, but it was just it was it was a very small area. Very small, you know, because it's a junior school, so there's no, it wasn't a big area, and it was the only adults there was me and the instructor. The rest were just kids, and admittedly, at least two of the kids were bigger than me. You know, like six six foot or whatever. But still, they were still kids, and I was like, well, there's part of I think a part of doing any kind of activity there is the social aspect even if you don't go drinking with them or don't go out spending time outside of the club with the person or with the people there's still that degree of like just commonality say hello and how you doing and it's yeah after a while you get to know people in it so uh, which I did with the Taekwondo club. I was a little bit shy though. There were some people I never really sort of talked to much. Because I didn't see them outside. But my instructor, still don't know his name, but I used to call him Sir. He used to take me to, to the gradings. I used to go in his car. And... He told me off for calling him sir because I was in the back of the car. It wasn't just me; there was a couple of people there as well. And I think his son was with him because son was one of the instructors as well. He'd been a black belt since he was ten, and my instructor didn't start doing taekwondo till he was forty. So I, I quite liked that because I just turned. Yeah, I was forty myself at that time. Yeah, I was 40. So having an instructor who started maybe 12 years earlier, and he was my age, or 13 years earlier, whatever, so I thought, oh, cool, this is pretty cool. And he, he, I was in the back and I was saying, Sir, are we there yet? Sir, is it okay? Can I have something to eat, please? Sir, <laughs> sir, can you help me take my socks off? He used, he got a bit annoyed with me after a while, and um, he said, "Call me by my name." And no, I won't take your socks off. You can have something to eat. I'd rather you not do it in my car. And I'd really rather you not bring your microwave with you next time. And are we there yet? You'll know when we're there yet. yet. That doesn't make sense, does it? You'll know. You see, you're confusing me now. You'll know when we're there because we'll stop the car and turn the engine off. And you know, you know it, 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 it cry internally. That's what I did. I cried internally. I was very upset. I was just. I just wanted him to love me. So. Yeah, that was it. Was it was a very nice bloke taking me to the to the to uh, the gradings. I think I did four gradings when I was there. I think all first class passes. Thank you very much. That's the only thing I can say. With all the gradings I ever did during my martial art years, always got a first class grading. But I never skipped a belt I never skipped a grade and I know people that have done that so I was never I was never good enough to skip a belt but at least I got a first class pass so that was nice I, don't, I probably told us I mentioned this before there was uh, there was this bloke and I didn't really enjoy him um, but anyway, he came. He came in one day after going to a tournament. I never did any tournaments with the um, taekwondo. And he came back, and he was so proud of this 
this uh, trophy he won and he came first in a it was like the kata which is the form you know when you you just you're on your own you do the do all the different movements punches kicks and all that stuff some some people call it a kata like kata k-a-t-a other people call it a form f-o-r-m it, everyone's I suppose got their own names and stuff and they've got their individual names as well what the kata is or what the form is anyway he 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 became got first place he was so proud so proud of holding this he literally he got a hat and he got a hat and on top of it was the trophy it was glued to the top of the hat and you could see him coming because it was on his little moped and he had it on top of his helmet and he kind of got a bit unstuck because he went under a bridge that was too low but that's besides the point he was so proud and I heard some laughing in the corner you know sort of during a break and I sort of went over and listened and it turned out that the reason he got first place is because he was the only entry <laughs> he was the only person that entered that particular part of the contest it's just you, you couldn't make it up <sighs> I mean obviously you couldn't enter a, a fighting contest if there's only one of you farting contest I'd be I'd be number one all the time why do you keep them talk about farting? Yeah, I don't understand. Why do you keep doing it? Right. So I've got... Uh, uh, uh. So, so far I've got two people who give me their dates, their years of birth. Not giving me, but shared it with the group. So I've been looking... I've been looking for a a martial arts club, one that really is more suitable for my age or my body. Um, I don't know. I mean, that sounds wrong, but something which isn't like he a lot of cardio. Although I do need to improve my cardio, I'm never going to be running a marathon. That just ain't going to be happening. I couldn't do it when I was in the peak of my fitness. Definitely ain't going to be doing it now. But, you know, I've, I've been getting fitter gradually, getting stronger over time, over the last few months, doing weights, and I'm going to start doing a bit more walking. Oh. Vinny, come on, darling. No, mate, no. The whole point of us being here with the door closed is so you don't bark. If you're going to bark, what's the point? What's the point, Vin? Eh? I think you'll agree there's no point. Is there anyone there? Is there anyone there? No, there's no one in the door. Right, this is one of those days. Vinny started barking and it has started raining outside. <laughs> Two things that don't make me feel wonderful. So hopefully he'll calm down a bit. It's I've got the window open, but I have got the, the living room door closed. But I have to have one because of the air circulation. I need. I have the window open all year round. I like to have some air coming in. Apart from when it's like really cold. When it's really cold, then I don't have the window open. Like really, you know, because that's just, just a bit too cold, that's all. So I don't have the window open in the bedroom in the winter. But then since I've had Vinny, I can't always have it open at night during, during the summer because of the sounds. Any sound is like, oh, it's that butterfly three miles away, just past wind. Oh my God. 
Okay, so where are we going with this? Um, I had a thingy. Oh, okay. I found two. I found a, a martial arts club, which is a jujitsu academy. And I found this oh, ages ago. And I, I bookmarked it because it's 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 looked like it's a possibility, a good possibility. Okay, there's. Oh, let's have a look. Tuesday, Tuesday. So there's a a beginner's class. So let's have a look. On a Monday, it's available. Yeah, so it's available at eleven o'clock on a Monday till noon, twelve thirty to one thirty on a Monday. So I could go during the day. Tuesday, six a.m. to seven a.m. <laughs> no thanks. Um, so twelve thirty to one thirty. So that's uh, you can go there as well. Wednesday, eleven till noon. You could go. Just during the day would be better, better for me, really. So there's nothing on a Thursday. But there's there's evening ones, on a Friday, eleven till noon. And that's an open mat, so I guess it's practicing. The Wednesday is as well. Oh, okay. So Friday, eleven till noon, open mat. But then there's twelve thirty to one thirty mixed levels. So let's have a look. Mixed levels, 12.30 to one thirty Monday. Mixed levels, 12.30 to one thirty Tuesday. There's an open mat Wednesday, but we'll leave that for now. So Thursday, okay, so go to Friday, 12.30 to one thirty mixed levels. So I could do Monday, Wednesday, no, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, midday, Saturday, there's also 11.30 to 12.30, no gi, so it's a mixed level, Sunday is closed, so potentially, I could go Monday, Tuesday, Friday and Saturday during the day. Now if I, if I could get there for six <laughs> six to seven AM I'm laughing at that, just the idea of I mean to be fair, it's not that difficult because should not get up at about four in the morning anyway. But I don't think I would trust Vinny to be on his own at that time in the morning without barking. That would worry me. Although Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Monday is eleven a.m. Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday. We'll see. So I think how it works. Uh, I have mentioned this before. So membership. I think what you have to do to start with is. It's sign in for a beginner's course. It's one. It's every Tuesday and Thursday for a month at six thirty p.m. And then once the month is over, it's um, like a, just a monthly fee, which is. Eighty pound a month. The initial beginners course is one hundred and twenty. For the beginners, beginners course. 
it says £120 per session but I think it's like for the whole it better be bloody hell blimmin did I just swear I never swear on these recordings do I piss so I Tuesday and Thursday so if I started in well once I got the money together if I can save that up I can start on a Tuesday at 6.30 till 7.30 and then a Thursday 6.30 till 7.30 do that for a month and this is oh I didn't tell you this is Jiu Jitsu because I've looked at two Jiu Jitsu clubs that's I miss out bits don't I so I've come to the conclusion rightly or wrongly that Jiu Jitsu may be the best sport for me based on age based on my my lower back not necessarily being able to run around or um, kick and stuff so I'm thinking Jiu Jitsu would perhaps be the best one for me and it might be really good for me physically and mentally to do that and then go if I can go a few times a week after that once the first month's done so it's £120 for the first month but you do get a gi uh, for those who don't know what a gi is it's um, it's like a big horse uh, full of jewels and you wind it up and it sings Christmas carols. It's not that it's all. It's, not, it's just the costume, not the costume. Oh, did I say costume? It's not fancy dress. It's it's the the, the white suit. The I mean, some some people call them pajamas, but they're not. And it's just a standard thing, gi gi, which is used in. A lot of martial arts, most in you, I would probably argue, not all, but a lot. So I found two, two different places. And they both look good, both look good, both, one isn't specifically Jiu Jitsu. One does, I'll read it off to you. Where is it? It does home. Let's go to home and I'll read it off to you. Right, they do MMA, Muay Thai, boxing, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, no gi submission wrestling, and kids' classes. So let's see, this is the first one, not the one that I mentioned earlier. The the, the one I mentioned before was specifically just Jiu Jitsu. So mixed martial arts is one of the fastest growing sports in the world and one of the earliest. Derived from Pancration, All of Powers, which was introduced at the Greek Olympic Games 648 BC and Vail Tudo a no holds barred sport popular in Brazil, the sport of mixed martial arts increasing popularity, blah blah. So they charge you get a free trial, so you get a free first free class, which is nice. That's often the way I think with uh, martial arts clubs. They've got with this place it's £65 a month if you choose one discipline but if you can if you pay £85 a month you can choose to do anything you can pretty much turn up for all the classes 
So you've got Muay Thai, Boxing, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I mean, I'm looking at all the classes, see all the classes, oh, timetables, sorry. Classes, timetable. Okay, if I go time to, oh, just bang the microphone. If I go to timetable for, for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Okay, here we go. What? That's not what I wanted. Classes, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Personal hygiene rules. Okay, that'd be interesting. What does it say there? No farting. Uh, please, no farting in people's faces. That is, I mean, I'm, this is a, a genuine concern of mine. Because if I was to sort of bend around on the floor on my own, there's a chance the odd fart might escape out of its prison and yeah it's, I mean there's one thing doing that aiming one at someone but aiming at someone that can do Jiu Jitsu is not a good idea is it please ensure you keep excellent personal hygiene when attending classes do I need to bring my own kit Bring your own kit and keep it sanitised regularly. Big on hygiene, this is good. Are all the classes suitable for me? No. You're overweight, you're old. Choose something that doesn't take so much effort. That's rude, isn't it? Blimey. No, it says all classes on a timetable are suitable for complete beginners to intermediates. Pro classes are invite only and do not, and are they not on the timetable? Okay. Well, I haven't really got to worry about pro classes right now, have I? No. So let's have a look at timetable. Timetable Monday. Uh, beginners, intermediate. Okay, so for the Jiu Jitsu. Six to seven, seven to eight. No gi grappling, no gi grappling, intermediate, advanced, beginners, intermediate. Okay, so BJJ, no begin. Oh, no, grappling, that would be wrestling, wouldn't it? Okay, so BJJ, beginners, is on a Tuesday. And then BJJ, the next BJJ beginners isn't, right, there isn't, it's only once a week. Oh. But you've got all levels, so there's one BJJ all levels. There's a sparring, 7 to 7.45. BJJ all levels on a Friday. BJJ. So this doesn't really. It looks good. I mean, it looks like a, you know, a good place. But I was thinking, me, you know, they got two floors as well. But I'm thinking, yeah. Let's look at the gallery at the place that I'm thinking of going to. I'd like to go somewhere where I'm not the oldest. That might sound weird to sort of be like that, but I don't really want to be, because cause I don't want to be the oldest. It's as simple as that. I don't want to be known as the old man. You know, go and get old, the old bloke. No one le learns my name, just everyone knows when you say the old bloke. Oh, yeah, the old bloke. Right pointing to me like no learn my name what's my name what's my name it's not old bloke it isn't old bloke it's Jason that's not my name <sighs> the sad thing about it is I'll be trained by people 
It's like, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm going to get trained by people younger than me. When I was younger, it was always people older than me. Now everyone's younger than me. Everyone in the whole world. Every single person. Competitions. So this now I'm at the, the jiu-jitsu place. It's the only place that I've found that's specifically for jiu-jitsu. Facilities or... Right, okay, so this is them at the... This is them at the, what's it? Competition winner, 2022. Wow, cool. 2023. Okie dokie. So let's have a look. Contact, where is it though? That's the question, isn't it? I don't know how far away it is. Uh, let me see. I mean, what I need to do, find out how much it's going to cost in a taxi. Because it might cost a lot of money and I don't... I suppose I might be able to ask them and say, can I do the the introduction but just come once a week and do it over two months? They might say yes, they might not. But they might, but they might not. Okay, let's go to the mini cab app on my phone. Pick up from pick up from oh okay. Seventy three. Seventy three Okay. And nope. I just want to get a quote. Book ride. No, I don't want to book a ride. I want to get a quote. Bookings. Upcoming. They're not upcoming. Ongoing. No. History. There's no bookings found. I've used them before. That's weird. Hmm. Right, I'm going to have to go on to Goggle. Unless ChatGPT can do it, I wonder. Give taxi price from... to where did I find... Doki, I wonder. Oh, it's giving me an estimate of around eighteen pound forty. That's just one way. Wow. Oh, not really doable, is it? It's not even. That's not even nearly possible. But then, if I go during the day, the rest of the time, I can get a bus up there. I don't know how, my, how many buses it takes. But in the evening, the buses kind of stop. I could perhaps get a bus there and then a taxi back. There's still like 40. Oh, blimey. Uh, okay, let's see. What buses? What buses do I need for this? Do I need for this journey? Let's see. The journey bus route. Walk to the nearest bus stop. Take a bus service ahead to walk. Uh, the sort of Transfer to a bus to class. Bus it's so area near. It's not giving me the numbers though. I do need the numbers. Okay. 
I mean, I guess there's two buses. At least two buses. And it's not in a nice part of town either. Uh, 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 uh. It just says this, 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 this part of me that thinks it would be quite nice to go back and learn, get back to training a little bit, but do it gently, not into like hectic or lots of energetic I basically just putting any effort in I don't want to put much effort in just the bare minimum to start with just take it nice and slowly I might have the wrong attitude for it I don't know yeah I did I mean I did do jiu-jitsu a few times um, back in about 2005 2006 time Unfortunately, or 2007, it was around that time, and it was at a local martial arts club. And they did karate. I didn't want. I didn't want to do karate again, so I'd done it before. And I do. I'd wanted to do something different. I'd done Wing Chun previous to that as well. So I thought, well, I want to do something different. And I literally walked past this martial arts club every day so I decided to go to the Jiu Jitsu and there was only me and one other bloke there he had a sports car not relevant but he did I'm not sure what he did for a living he had a nice really nice car and I think he gave me a lift home we had a cuddle but that's it nothing else and so he gave me we didn't well I don't know why I say stuff like that it's weird isn't it why do I have to just say silly things but this bloke that was teaching he was having too much fun hurting us like really enjoying it and I don't enjoy other people hurting me but what I enjoy less is people enjoying hurting me. You know, there's a cut off. There's a, there's a there's a point which I don't like. And unfortunately, when it's a jujitsu expert instructor doing it, there's not a lot you can do. It's just you, you know, it's <laughs> it, what do you, it's it's like sparring with a professional boxer. And he punches you too hard, or she punches you too hard. You're like, what are you going to do? You can't win. If you, okay, I want to punch him harder. And then you're going to wake up 10 minutes later. So it's, it's a, yeah, it's a weird, weird environment. But I didn't, this bloke, although he, was, he wasn't horrible, he was friendly, but he was a bit of a bully. And he was trying to rip my arm out. Of the, it seemed like he was trying to hurt me. And I was a lot fitter back then, just because I was younger. I was fitter, probably stronger and all that. And didn't weigh as much as I do now. But I didn't, yeah, I don't, I never, never taken kindly to physical pain from another person. Yeah, it's not my favourite thing. So I stopped going. It was just too hard. <laughs> No, it put me off because I thought, really? So is this all it is, just pain? That I can do this myself. I can, you know, I don't, I don't need to go and pay someone else to hurt me. I mean, it's, there's, a, there's a name for that, isn't there? BDSM or whatever it is. I don't need, to, I don't know, not, not my thing. And it said, put me off a little bit. I'm thinking though, if I go to a club that's more f like family orientated, orientated, oriented, or whatever, where there's going to be people of all ages, um, it'll be a bit more gentle. They'll see this our elderly old man, me, 
walking in. I'll see an elderly. It's really weird. I see elderly men, and I and it's like oh, I didn't realize it's a mirror. It's like I walked into. A, yeah, I remember walked into the the um, a gym once just to check it out. This is in town, and I was thinking, oh, good. There are people older here than me. The people here, and it was a mirror. It's like oh. I mean, that would have worked better if I hadn't already mentioned it, that I looked in the mirror and saw myself and thought it was an older person. But, you know, let's just forget that. I don't realise what I look like until I see myself. Which in some ways seems like a, a standard, obvious statement, but I don't look the same as I used to. Not to me. Mind you, I discovered something the other day. I... I was getting ready for bed. No, was I getting ready for bed? Yeah, I was getting ready for bed. So I had my glasses off. I put them, I've got this like a routine. Put my glasses on the table so I know where they are. Go into the bathroom, do what I need to do there. And then I go into the bedroom and go to bed. Well, I heard activity downstairs and it was a neighbour so I, I like, knocked on a window to go down and see them so I went down I saw a couple of people and what I realised is everyone looks better people look different when I haven't got glasses on so my eyesight it's people and I wonder maybe I look different if I take my glasses off maybe if I look in the mirror I get to see what I really look like. It's almost like these glasses are transforming or distorting how things really are. Because when I look in a mirror with these glasses, I look old. But when I don't wear them, I don't look so old. So I'm thinking it's making, it's sort of, I don't know, is it like a prank? It's a spec saver prank. I don't know. Let's have a look, see, when, when I bought them, was it the 1st of April? Why the 1st of April, though? Why, you know, April Fool's Day? What, what, where did that even come from? Anyone? Does anyone know? Anyone? I'm going to ask. Origin of, of April Fool's Day. Let me see what ChatGPT, my assistant, says. The origin of April Fool's Day is not entirely clear. Well, why? Just tell me. Don't, don't. There are several theories about how it began. So here's the first one. Calendar, calendar change theory. One of the most popular theories like links April Fool's Day to the 1582 adoption of the Gregorian calendar by much of Europe. This reform, introduced by Pope Gregory X111, moved the start of the new year from late March, early April. Moved the start of the new year from late March to early April. Late March, early April, as it, as it was under the Julian calendar to January the 1st. Wow. I didn't know that. Did you know that? So, in 1582... Sorry, Vinny, I just trod on his foot. Sorry, mate. In 1582, before 1582, New Year's Day was the beginning of April or late at the end of March not the 1st of January I didn't know that does anyone else know that? confusion and mockery I mean some countries might say that doesn't make sense but some people in countries your country didn't exist at that time because you know but Pope Gregory I mean that's that would be Italy wouldn't it? So why did we take that on? Or were the Romans still in, the Romans weren't in charge then, was they? Because the Romans um, probably got ruled England or Britain for 
800 years or something like that. Or was it 400 years? It was a long time anyway. I mean, that's a, that's a hell of a long movie if you were sitting watching it. Ah, I wonder. Anyway, confusion and mockery. Some people continued to celebrate the old New Year in late March and early April. These individuals were mocked as fools by others who adhered, here, adhered to the new calendar. Over time, pranks and jokes became associated with this period. I mean, because some bloke with a hat in another country says, you now got to celebrate your... Like, no. It's why would, I can see why people wouldn't want to change something that's been the same for maybe hundreds and hundreds of years. So they all... Although to us it makes sense, January the 1st, it's the beginning of the year, isn't it? It makes sense, but the end of March would make sense if that's what we grew up to understand, and our parents, and our parents before them, and their parents, and their parents, and their parents, and their parents, you know, just like going back generations. Still haven't received my DNA test, and I went on to Ancestry, and nothing. It's really weird. It's been, what, over two months now. The second potential reason for April Fool's Day is spring renewal and festivals. April Fool's Day may have roots in ancient spring festivals where people celebrate the changing of seasons with playful and mischievous behaviour. For example, Roman festival of Hilaria, 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 celebrating the end of March. Hilaria, Hilaria, I'm not quite sure how to say it, involved games, jokes and dressing up in disguises. Oh, cool. But that was in Rome. A very, very Roman everything here, isn't it? Were we Roman back then in this country? I don't know. It's hard to keep track of all the different um, countries that invaded my country. We were invaded so many times in the past. It got to the point where we eventually thought, you know what, we're going to do the invading. <laughs> Maybe. It's, uh, it's very strange. Do you imagine being born and knowing nothing else other than the Romans being in charge. Knowing nothing else. That's how it's always been. As far as you know. And that's how it's your whole life. And there's, there's no question in it. I wonder if I was one of the... I, I do wonder if I was related to one of the slaves back then. Because I imagine a lot of the the children that were born would have been born from the the love the love between some of the Romans and the indigenous people. Fish related origins. In France, April 1st is known as Poison de Avery, Poison de Avril, Poison, Poison de Avril, April Fish. That's in brackets. This tradition may have started in the 16th century when people played pranks by attaching paper fish to each other's backs. The fish symbolised a gullible person as young fish are easily caught. Um, I mean, we did that at school, didn't I? I don't know if you did it at school, but, you know, you, 
you'd write a rude sign and get some sellotape and stick it on someone's back as they walk past. Do you remember that? Was, I mean, it wasn't just a once a year event. At my school, it was every day. No one else seemed to get it done, but, you know, I didn't see anyone else have them on the back of their backs, but I used to come home and have them back. I mean, sometimes I get to school, it was on there, so I don't know how it got on there before I even left the house. Hmm. My parents. Literary references. This is number four. The first documented association of April Fool's Day with pranks appears in a, night, uh, a 1561 Flemish poem by Edouard de Den, where a noble man sends his servant on foolish errands on April the 1st. By the, by the 18th century, the day was widely celebrated with pranks across Europe. Ah, isn't that interesting? So quite a few, just be, could be a mix of all those things, I guess. So modern celebration, while its exact origin is debated, April Fool's Day is now celebrated world, worldwide with playful tricks and jokes, often light-hearted and harmless. Over time, it was evolved into a day full of humour, creativity and sometimes elaborate hoaxes. The newspapers generally do an April Fool's hoax story and they put it on the front page or they put it somewhere. But it's really hard to know which one's which because all the stories look like they're April Fool's stories. Everything the newspaper prints just looks unbelievable at times. Blimey. O T, O T, O T, Mabusi, Ba, O T, O T, O T, Mabusi, Boo, Boo. That's uh, one of the uh, jungle, um, get me out of here, jungle contestants. So, I think she's been strictly come dancing. I remember it used to just be called Come Dancing. It's ir ironic, really, because now it's called Strictly Come Dancing. It's not as strict as it used to be. It's a bit more laid back, if anything. You know, all the laughing and the, the jokes and the, you know, the relaxing. Come Dancing didn't used to be like that in the past. It was very strict. Rules, quite tight rules. And people took it seriously. Now it's it's almost become like a fun fair. And there's nothing wrong with fun. But you need to be fair with a fun fair. It's called fun fair for a reason. It needs to be fair. It's very... I don't know what that meant. That sounded good then when I said it. I thought, oh, that will lead me somewhere nice. There's, there's possibly a humorous anecdote or something in that. But nothing came up. Admittedly, I didn't spend much time thinking about it. But in the moment, it was like, oh, this is just saying the word. Breaking the word funfair into fun and fair and focusing on each part of the word and nothing good's really going to come of it. It's a bit pointless. Now, admittedly, I didn't need to tell you that. I didn't need to really go into the... Uh, do you think maybe I, I overthink about, I overthink things sometimes? Maybe, maybe. But I didn't need to tell you that either, did I? Do I need to mention that perhaps I overthink and... I don't think there's anything wrong with overthinking. It's, it's not like it keeps me awake. Very little, very little of go, what goes on in my life keeps me awake. 
because I have a very boring life. Uh, yes, uh, I do. Uh, uh, Facebook is getting silly now. It's just the amount of stuff that they're putting on there. Oh. The some of it's interesting, but what? Right, okay. I'm just seeing stuff and I'm thinking, what? I don't even know what I'm looking at. Like an ice cream maker made of, I don't know what it's made of. I really don't know. Anyway. Right, oh, what, oh, I don't want to watch that. I don't want to watch that. So I'm thinking, I could go to the Jiu-Jitsu specific club, or go to the other one, which is in a different place. Let's find out where that is. To find out the address. Where's the address? I mean, this looks like it's even further away. Um, change target address. Two. Okay, six miles. So from my house to the other place is six miles. Estimated taxi fare would be fifteen eighty. Uh, that's from taxi price compare, some website they've used. I don't know, I kind of like the idea of going to just one place which focuses on just one thing rather than lots of different things. So let me have a look. I have a look at the, the place I used to go to. So I used to go to boxing at this club. This is when I was at University. Oh, they got a world champ there. Wow, brilliant. Why is it okay? So you got classes. Let's have a look at the classes karate, MMA, boxing, energizing powerlift club. Okay, karate, MMA. So when I went there, there was boxing, there was karate, there was, I'm pretty sure they had jiu-jitsu, perhaps not, but they had Krav Maga, Mav Kraga, Krav, Krav Maga, yeah, Krav Maga, and I also had kickboxing, but it don't look like they have that anymore. Hmm. Oh, no, they do. Karate, kickboxing, boxing, little dragons, Mai Tai, and MMA. No, Mu, not Mai Tai, Mu, Mu Tai, Mu Tai, Mu Tai. Mai Tai, that's a, it's a drink, isn't it? Or, it's an argument when you're in Thailand. There are two men arguing. She's Mai, she's Mai Tai. Oh dear, that's really bad. Or well, he's my type. Karate. So that's. I used to go there for the boxing, and they really, they were, they were friendly. But it, the two things I really didn't like about the place, or I struggled a little bit, is first of all, there were adults there, but it was mainly kids. I wasn't allowed to spar 
which takes away the fun of it, really. Because I was too old. I think 36 is the... Is it 34, 36 is the legal limit or something. Because it was the it was an amateur boxing club. And also there was an audience of parents watching. And I could tell that... I could hear laughter. Now, you might think, oh, paranoia, paranoia. If you knew how much I sweat when I exercise. And I was wearing a t-shirt and it would be soaked through like completely soaked I mean I mean you, you say it used to be wet it used to get completely wet and that was just walking to the punch bag I, that's before it even started so yeah I got through a couple of t-shirts and I think it was uh, so having the audience I didn't like it does I think with karate and you're always going to have you know the odd parent sticking around waiting for the for the kid or something like that but not I mean literally it's like a gallery there's sometimes like 20 20 adults waiting just watching their kids and because they did it in an area where there was an area for people to watch well, actually there was over the other side as well, tables and stuff. So I guess it's very family orientated. But I didn't enjoy that. I don't like an audience when I'm sweating. The other thing that really, I just, I felt that I was just being ignored. Now, admittedly, I didn't expect, you know, when I walked in every time for everyone to start shouting my name and cheering and all the instructors to run up and hug me and lift me up in the air. Like, he is the champion of the world. Do, 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 do. Jason. Jay. I, I didn't expect that. It would have been nice once or twice, but I didn't expect it. Um, but I felt very much ignored. I'd be left to just do my own thing. And, and the reason for that is because it was an amateur boxing club. I was of no use to them. Because I wasn't able to go to tournaments. I wasn't able to win any medals. Because I was old. Even then I was old. And this is... <laughs> this is when I was like 30... Eight thirty-nine. So I wasn't that old, but I'm now a little bit older than that. Wow. So that you know, I, I mean, did sometimes say, "Oh, you've lost weight." So I always lose weight when I do martial arts, or any. Not, I know karate and um, boxing is not a martial art, but um, technically you could say it is because boxing was uh, Eastern. Thing as well, they used to call it boxing, but it's more kung fu. Yeah, like Chinese boxes and stuff. But I, I don't know. I just didn't feel equal. Didn't feel equal, and I wasn't. I mean, there's a picture of the people that have got grades or I don't know if they got grades or if there's a tournament but they're pretty much all uh, you can see the only people that aren't kids are the instructors and there's one 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 adult that's obviously an adult another one might be an adult because they're all wearing red tops and there's a woman that might be in there it's hard to tell from the picture everyone else's kids and I'd like it to be ideally all adults that would be preferable but you know I don't have a say over that so I'm thinking I'm going to go if I can find a way to do it go to the Jiu Jitsu Academy rather than 
go into a place that does lots of different ones. I mean, for example, there is a where is it? I'll show you the place I used to go to. Place I used to go to. No, that's not the one. Where is it? Oh, that's it. Show me the website. Why is the website? There it is. Got it. So they've been going for a long time. This club, where I used to live, this club that I used to walk past, where I did the jiu-jitsu, the instructor, the karate instructor, or the, the person in charge of the whole club who has been in karate for decades and decades, he used to do my gradings when I was a kid at school for the karate. And they've got their own building now and I don't know how long the building's been there but it's been there a long time. It's, uh, yeah, it's a cool, cool place. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know if I fancy... I wouldn't go there because it's too far away. But they do do... Oh, they do Crab Mega now. They do... They've got Little Dragons, that's for kids, Junior Karate, Adult Karate. See, that, that's, that suits me to rather go to like an adult cl class, you know? And we've got Family Karate, karate Black Belt Karate, gra Crab Mega, Self Defense, and kickboxing. Cool. Should we go to the website for my uh, for the one that I used to go to? Shall we? Yeah. So this is the, the karate club I used to go to when I was little. When I was little. Little, 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 ooh, little, I was so little, little kid, I was, I was, I was. Oh, where is it? Well, there's clearly more than one martial arts place there now. There used to be just one. Now there's, no, there didn't used to be, there was two. There was a karate and a judo club, but now there is um, more than that. Oh, okay. So I want to try and find my one. Oh, I know how to do it. I know his name. I still remember my, my, my instructor's name. I found it and it's not working. The website's not up. Why is that? Why is the website not up? That's not fair. It's not right. It should be up. It's been there since 1974. And, oh, there's a picture of my instructor, and he's a six band, he's a six stand now, presented with the prestigious EKKA Student of the Year Award at this year's summer camp. It was presented with the student of the year. Okay, the award was the, the award was presented by association president. Ah, and that's the man, Mick. He's the one that. Uh, ah, so he was his instructor. Which is why he did the gradings for us. Ah, oh, makes sense. 
Wow. And it was for Paul. So Paul, who was my old instructor, he got that for being support in the association. And since the very beginning, 50 years ago. Wow. It's amazing because I used to see my instructor probably, what, 19... Because I started working in the chip shop, 86. So probably 86, 87, 88. I'd see him every now and then. I knew where he worked. I didn't go into his place of work, but I just, you know, because he worked in town. So I saw him in Tesco or something like that. And he'd ask me, when am I coming back? And I would always say, oh, soon, soon. Sometimes I say, what's it got to do with you? I'll come back when I want to come back. If I want to come back, I might go somewhere else. I'm already better than you. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> I really liked him a lot. He used to give me lifts to the gradings. No, not the gradings. He'd give me lifts to the tournaments. That's it, the tournaments. Yeah, it was cool. I nearly went back there. I nearly went back, not to the club, but to the town. That's where my nan used to live. And I actually, when I was near the front of the list of getting a council flat, or, you know, bidding, and I was able to, and this was 2014, I bidded on a, th on a property which was in the same town as where my nan lived. And probably, no, was it? Yeah, probably like November time. And I was bidding and I got offered, yeah, and I, I bidded on it and they said, Oh, um, you're at the top of the list. You're, you're number one. I've always wanted to be number one. And I thought, okay, cool. And then they never got back to me. That's so why I assumed, oh. And then I was offered another place. And I thought, oh, they must have just changed my mind. So I was offered a chance to see this place, which I came to see. And... About two or three weeks after I'd been here, moved in, that is, I got a phone call from them saying, so um, do you want to come and have a look at this property then? And they left it weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, months even. So I don't know what, why. Maybe they had a tenant and they couldn't get rid of the tenant or something, couldn't get them out. But it was like, Really? Really? And it was too late. And if I had have gone there, I could have gone back to the karate club. I wonder, oh, imagine if he would remember me. He wouldn't remember me, would he? Because 86, 96, 2006, 2006, it's like, blimey. That's over 12 years, isn't it? It's a long time. He's unlikely to remember me because I don't look the way I used to look. Which is annoying. It's annoying because my, my little brother and my step little brother both look the same. To me, they look the same. I just haven't changed. They haven't aged, really. They've aged, but not, not like aged, aged. If that makes sense. They're not like just... I, I, I look completely different. I don't look anything like how I used to look. Especially when I look through these glasses. Because they're all distorted. Type of glasses off, I look fine, baby. Just fine. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So this karate club, founded, the one I used to go to, founded in 1974. I went in about 1984. 
1983, 84. So it's only been running for 10 years. And it is the longest running martial arts club in the area. I wonder if it says, I wonder if it's still the same days, Tuesday and Thursday. I wonder. I don't know. I got no idea. Oh well. But he looks well. My old instructor. And you think if he's been an instructor since the time he was for 50 years, he's going to be in his 70s now. So he looks amazing. Honestly, he looks just... And he's really tall, so he's about 6'6", six, six, I'd say. Um, if I remember rightly, he's really tall. Slim but strong, you know, for that make He's big but not... He hasn't quite got the belly that, I, that I've got. I think that would have helped him. <laughs> Maybe not. Wow. Imagine that, all the people he's helped, all the kids that he's helped and the people for since 1974. That's nearly my entire life. It's a long time, isn't it? It's, it's literally 50 years this year. How many people have done the same thing, stuck to the same thing for 50 years? I struggle to stick to the same thing for 50 minutes. Wow. Right, so this is, I guess this is a short recording. How long have we been talking for? Sorry, Vinny, I didn't realise you were sitting on you. Yeah, it's a little bit of a shorter recording. I think I might have to uh, take the little Wally for a uh, W-A-L-K, an afternoon wander. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got boxes on tonight, which is good. And tomorrow's Sunday. I don't know if I'm going to continue doing the Sunday papers because I got rid of the app, the Sunday newspaper app. Well, it's not a Sunday newspaper app, but it's just, I don't know if I'm going to bother. I've, I've looked at ways of getting the news, but I'll be honest with you, I look through the news and it's just, it's so hard to find anything that's kind of even slightly positive. It's just, you know, it's. I think it would take all day long looking through every single paper that I can get my hands on from around the world to find some funny stuff or some nice stuff. It's, well, that's just the way newspapers are, isn't it? For some reason, I don't quite know why. I do wonder though, if the newspaper was created and it was only good news. You know, that's all it was, just good news. Would anyone want to look at it? Would they? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. 
What was I going to talk about in this recording? Anyone? I don't know. I really can't remember. I'm sure there was a topic. Oh well. At least on a Monday, Tuesday and Friday. It's more focused. Kind of. Uh, Mondays I talk about boring object. Or boring subject. Some would argue I do that every day. When I make a recording. Tuesday is Trivia Tuesday. Friday is Q&A Friday. So it's a, li- it's a little bit focused on those days. Maybe not so much on the other days. Ah oh, well. Thank you for listening. So remember to be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye. Relax in a more deep and meaningful way, maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow and then by listening regularly especially if you find like some people do, and myself as well. I Sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, 
press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really it was as if my body knew exactly what to do and the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation and I remember my mind would slow down I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, 
and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze, even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation 
This allows you to breathe easier. Without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice the ease in which You breathe so naturally. You breathe so very easily and smoothly. My breathing, improving, when I've got my eyes closed. I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly.
so deeply peaceful. Completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. completely free noticing that Your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs D. 
deeply. Pleasant feelings in your arms, in shoulders, deepen in each part of your body. Further and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Deeply There's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower.
a very slow stomach peaceful in your stomach Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine from your brain all the way down the middle of your back sending and receiving millions of messages every day Deeply relaxed. Your knees, relax. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Your elbows, 
feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body tips of your toes to your eyes your fingers all the way to your lower back and letting go really letting go Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more
enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice your forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom.
peaceful energy. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace. Total peace.
Letting go. Body. body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and you give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off 
and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling a positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour however long you want it to be to just rest and allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body and as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on 
will continue to relax deeply. And those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds, like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon, can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't, this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Relaxed and loose and calm. And now the back of your neck, focus in on the back of your neck, letting go any tension that may have been there before and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. down your back 
moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser the muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. The spreads into your hips, so down your lower back into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you are nowhere about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And they're feeling. Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. the 
feet in your shoulders. Seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles, but also relaxing the bones. to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms, healing, you feel so shoulders, which sends that deep healing message into your arms, and you may feel Almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows, circumference spread all the way into your wrists, your forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time, so light and gentle. Focus.
a sense of real peace. It just seems to feel so familiar. Tips attention to the front of your body, so comfortable, muscles in your thighs your knees
muscles and your shins completely So I'm going to start counting down now, from 20 down to 1. You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step rep 
presents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
14. Thirteen.
Six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down, and you may find do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now focus in on your eyes going to begin counting down from 10 down to 1, right now,
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. You just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think Think about anything. So it, op it opens up a space, you know, a bit of a space, a gap. And the more I count down from 10 to 1, the bigger that gap becomes. So there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The 
gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Now, ten, nine, eight, seven. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps we give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of acknowledgement. A thank you. Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, again such an important part, and I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee, so occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, on the bottoms of your legs, 
the shins and your calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. It's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms. Which is okay, doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And it's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles, they didn't seem to do anything. Uh, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. There to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your, your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. course it's protected by your legs so you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs that fold in between your legs you can just massage with your fingertips imagine your fingertips going inside Massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body, they're more precious than any jewel the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit silly to start with 
the idea of having the love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles in the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, still a lot of weight, these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet they also go whew, and my toes clap they're so happy your legs really and I know that talk about, talking about your legs is probably possibly one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. really can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles are just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax, and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. You know, maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each.
each muscle in your body. and just observing the sensation of letting go completely This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. slow and peaceful six slowed right down sink in deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice
notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. as you focus on those remaining thoughts as we count down this time from seven down to one with each number just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love kindness gratitude over those thoughts which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number those thoughts will become more with number seven
changing now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands and your fingers, There's nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, that your mind is starting to drift Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your No. 
starting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. generally thinking about stuff when you take that away which is what we do what we do now you're left with a real 
real sense of peacefulness which comes to you very quickly because ultimately it's just a feeling a feeling of comfort it's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful a place where you can feel relaxed in your natural sense of comfort a place where you can be you where you can accept yourself for who you are a place where you're not trying to please anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are and that sense of gratitude is in the air all around you and that's also a place where you actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body healing energy soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins Traveling to each and every single part of your body. And you start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain. It's become part of your brain. spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment but also start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life it's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to because something has changed deep within you maybe
happy things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier. And sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you. Because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. Sure, I'm telling you, stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. The more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy to let go because that's all it is it's just deciding to let go and when you pr- 
press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive, only a positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, just feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. Each and every day, moving forward. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower, it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. Negativity will disappear. And 
that you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty.
is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. to give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision you're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles. 
muscles or of the fat or of everything every hair on your body is filled with that green energy and your brain is filled relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and it may start to drift what's needed so if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts that's also is by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission for your body and your mind, in fact, you give the command to your body and your mind to relax. Drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, focusing on a different part of your body and you may find yourself drifting but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting you get you alert again to my voice focusing different part of your body starts to relax even deeper because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone and the more you drift the longer you drift sleep and that's the last you remember 
Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they now seem to just melt into one. your right hand start and your left hand end. Almost as if they just mix together. Now focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. on your elbows, focusing in on both of the elbows, just observing the feeling of your elbows.
go of everything letting I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently, maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face, just so you can feel my hands, so you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can 
feel my hands. Gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realize that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. And this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. 
move into the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. And make you feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms, we'll do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. And what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. I want it to still be attached. And I'll just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be 
an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and you do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we would have been, that area at the top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again very gentle, and yet firm as you choose, and eventually we get to the spine, we can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can 
do that a few times. Sometimes we can use the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching the body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, and you're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage, Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it, you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged, it releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process, which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting 
with the upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from the chest. So it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. So we're going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine in your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. Working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose, using both hands, the fingers digging deep. of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot, massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet.
gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, and you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently, massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving down your ankle into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience while having your feet massaged, feel really Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again with your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up, I can clean my hands, make them all fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. You can 
just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, chin. moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. Just massaging the whole of your chest. Moving the chest around. I believe it's quite a large area. As you move from one side to the next. Moving my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention. They feel really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, or just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. And we're going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your 
tutaj widać. Move round to the other side again. And repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. something about having the stomach massage that's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of so now massage your stomach front of your stomach and in circles around the belly button and going the other way around there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling So now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles, massaging them. And I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Gently massaging your knees. Sliding down your shins. Put the pressure on either side of your shin. Gently. Softly, but firmly. Moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go. Enjoy the process. Enjoy. comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy. going to 
do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. that candle in front of you and I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out just this is not a big it's just a gentle and that candle will extinguish and then I'll say the next number as we move down and you can just blow that one out yourself feeling more and more relaxed if you need to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more sounds where you are, you be aware of those sounds for the moment, and you may start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds there's a forest the pigeons I'd like 
likes to say hello sometimes. And there's the odd plane that goes by. There could be traffic and trains in the distance. But none of that seems important whatsoever. So simple. Now we're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting. Eight. 
Two, five. Ten, four. Ninety, four.
Isso.
those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, what your body starts to do because you've chosen you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down and it's a nice feeling it's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you so often we're busy we're going from here to there we're walking around and we're doing stuff and the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply so it kind of waits for you to lead the way waits for your permission do give your permission and you give the say so you can say okay it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally your body just follows it's all right the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past where you get home and you just sit down in a chair maybe you kick your shoes off and that oh feels so nice knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour feels blissful and just by sitting down like that your body knows that it's time to relax your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind you're prepared evaporate any tension 
emotions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and see more and more of alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of the clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As a sense of relaxation becomes stronger, deeper, and you may find that the more you relaxed you feel that your mind starts to wander, maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else, and then you realize you're listening to me again and it was just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed and tense we're not we may not actually be aware of what we need what we physically or emotionally moment, but when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all letting go down into the drop onto the floor. touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It's, it feels so nice. 
breathing out any excess feeling or tension or stress in every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things have come to a standstill be just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice, which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know when feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed really is benefits for your body and your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair in your head glistens. this healing relaxation and as you focus on the inside of your scalp where your brain is you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain they're no longer necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep concentrated
this ever increasing sensation of zero, comfort is a spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body. scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice 
to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So I'm going to start off by focusing on the hands. Just be aware of the hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Just maybe move your fingers a little bit. Opening and closing the hands very gently. Just so that you Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, and opening your toes gently. feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times. Really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squinting your eyes. Scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing on your thighs. And I would just ask you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. And noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck. They also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders. So as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards. As if you're looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down. Perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left. But only 
sensations, physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your knees, the palms of your biceps and between your elbow and your shoulders, as you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, and then I'd like you just tensely, but very, very gently. any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment. Noticing as you gently, very gently, and slowly tighten your muscles in your neck here. Notice. above your forehead, and as you are able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly, if that is difficult thing to do, then maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your physical sensations of your lower abdomen. And as you move your attention Noticing how your tongue in your mouth feels, and that may help by moving your tongue around your mouth, moving it to the left as you press it gently against the side of your mouth, move to the right 
an African stick, the tip of the lamp laying down gently against the bottom of the lamp. Always very slowly and very, very gently. sensations in you are tranquil, experiencing only this relaxing into your hands, lumping down and getting include the sides of the body as those muscles are very much connected. As those muscles also move into your hip area and off into your buttocks. Thank you. 
starts to slow down including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretching it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day to day life it's a slower movement energy very 
small movements which make up the larger movements which is always the case and when you move your hand it might seem like it's one movement but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other and what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just Oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm. I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. But starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings your body small physical sensations in the legs whether pleasurable or not and maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. Just noticing what your body is telling you. The feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the, all the internal parts of your arms, the veins, being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation forearm and your right arm. Your right forearm may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just 
a feeling like it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. It's almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. Or sitting on. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, you can tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. Your lower back. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and when I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently. Just stretched a little bit even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back. It just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. along that feeling in your chest just noticing what sensations you Experiencing in your chest right now. And with so much of the chest, obviously there's the collarbone leading to your chest, got the chest bone, you've got the muscles chest. Of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, I might not that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest. But at the side and underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue that stretches 
and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. feeling there is in your chest. Do I notice that I focus on my chest? I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I breathe in. In. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels... It feels okay. little bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. That's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas. Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes to do that at any point doing it if there's a, uh, an issue with a per part of your body you need to be gentle with yourself at all times in relaxing As you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? Peace.
peaceful as your mind right now. There's nothing to think about. There's just my voice to listen to. Because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slow body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect to happen. to fill your body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to as if you're moving further away from the body and the mind, just leaving that there, kind of like in an escape pod in a spaceship. Space movie, you know, and they've got that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe, free, Continue 
listening to your voice just as your mind started to imagine something different and being started to almost move into some kind of a dreaming state. to that space of comfort and safety. As you feel more comfort spreading through your body, Stress that is there. 
this physical sensation most like as a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and all the remaining feelings that you don't want sucking it out through your skull This is something that you can do in the sun, when you're on your own, a time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes, close your eyes, just
myself clean. Just notice be aware of how you feel. necessary for you so you can affirm that you feel like you know some of the numbers 10 going to go faster than I do I'll go ahead and do that or if you feel when you do it yourself
sin how you physically feel having passed by a painful time allowing the stress and tension to leave from the fingertips and the toes and as you focus on the fingertips you're going to feel a little bit tingling which is understanding that this is where the tension has been exiting your body through your fingertips. So now I'm going to count from 20 down to 1 again. This time you're going to feel relief of tension and stress and the anxiety that you may have. almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach and the navel to just the outer parts of the lower back area which surrounded your lower back area for the whole of your life you can feel the tension of your body that has left just releasing from that area and you may notice that your stomach just your little scanning of your body just noticing how you feel noticing your upper body how chest and stomach and legs and arms how you feel just noticing you can 
you to make up your mind who you're going to be next. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like for you to decide who you're going to be next. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself it is a command really isn't it when you're telling yourself you're next and I'll get into a bit further on but only you can really tell yourself who you are it's kind of like saying I'm saying to you don't relax relax you know um, you need to be gentle but you can't someone else can't really have the same test it out, you can do little tests, do little tests along the way and you can get more of an idea of who you thought or other people thought that you could have a greater sense of comfort and relaxation. 
start by just, just focusing your hands, so focusing your hands is just tell your hands to relax, so just say relax as you focus on your hands, you could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax, and I think if you actually do it directly Focusing and imagining that your hands can you feel it expand now that you've got all gears in your right hand. So talking to your hands, you just say relax. focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So just saying the same word, relax. And you find the right term for you. You know, I might say relax. For you, you might say relax or relax. You know, you, you might say it differently to yourself. That's important for you to gauge what is right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes rather than letting your mind wander with the idea. So just tell your eyes directly. Got yourself now. Sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax. You know, to just stop talking about maybe that part of it that you need to fill up. And what will happen is you will just become numb to the world. I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes, I actually will notice if they they got worse before they got better. You know, I feel that I felt a good deal of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was in the other realm. Focusing on it, you know, not really acknowledging it or you know, really actually feeling it, feeling it. And my eyes are still beginning to relax as well as my hands are. Hands have got a sense of not not spasm, but a kind of feeling that there's more tension in my hands. I would have I would have thought that they'd be relaxed by that spasm there. focus on the back of the neck, the 
that's a part that I feel uh, for me I would think is a good way to look for yourself and I think it's got a a standard pace where you teach them the simple form so and I'm, I'm doing it exactly as you would do as you do as a coach so I'm telling my body parts how it should be if you carry on that focusing on the same rituals to have a better life that would have a better quality of life for yourself if you don't know what you're saying you're not you're not going to know how to do this stuff Thank you. 